Emotion allows us to feel alive. It drives us to action, allows us to communicate with others, and to understand others better. Fear and anger can lead us to action. Laughter and smiles, they say, are the best medicine for the soul. Given its critical role in our everyday life, it's important to understand emotional development. In today's video, we will define emotion, review some basic characteristics of emotion, and describe the development of emotional display and understanding from infancy to adolescence. Emotion is defined as the outward expression of an internal state created by an interaction with one's environment. It is also characterized by neural and physiological responses, such as activation in the amygdala and an increased heart rate when you're afraid, subjective feelings, such as your own appraisal of how or why you are feeling afraid, and facial expressions, such as your eyes widening when you are afraid. While there are several theories of emotion, for today's purpose, we will focus on the theory of discrete emotions, which posits that there are two types of emotions, basic or primary emotions, and secondary or subconscious emotions. Basic emotions consist of six discrete and identifiable emotions, including sadness, fear, surprise or interest, disgust, happiness, and anger. If I were to ask you what emotion the baby in picture number six was feeling, the majority, if not everyone, could easily say happiness. Same with all of the other pictures. The majority of people have no trouble matching these six emotions to these pictures. The reason why this matching task seems to be so easy for most people is that basic or primary emotions have three characteristics that allow us to distinguish between these emotions. First is that they are universal, meaning that you can find these expressions across the world. Second is that they are distinct, meaning that each emotion is characterized by particular facial and physiological responses. And lastly, basic emotions are thought to be innate, meaning that they are experience independent. For example, these babies did not have to be taught to stick out their tongue to show disgust or to feel happy when interacting with their mom. While these emotions do not need to be taught, it doesn't mean that they are all evident in newborns. In fact, in the first month of life, most researchers would argue that babies do not display or feel any distinct basic emotion except for disgust. Instead, they tend to display pleasure or distress. Why? If we look back at how we defined emotion, an important aspect of the definition is that emotion has to be created by an interaction with one's environment. If you have ever been around a newborn, they sleep around 99% of the time, leaving little time to really interact with the environment. Therefore, while they can certainly display pleasure after having a bottle of milk, we would not necessarily label this as happiness. In fact, it isn't until the second month mark where we start to see the signature expression of happiness, smiling. Starting at two months, babies will smile in response to a human, most likely their caregiver. This milestone indicates that the baby wants to engage in social interactions, and because smiling is rewarding to the caregiver, Social smiles are foundational to social development in infancy. Between three to six months, we begin to see babies express more emotions, including anger and sadness. Anger is particularly evident when babies are unable to reach their goals, like being unable to grab a toy or stay awake when it is their nap time. Between six to nine months, we also begin to see fear in babies. Fear at this age is usually caused by loud noises, new objects, and strange people. It is also a period when we start to see some stranger anxiety or distress when encountering an unfamiliar individual. Not coincidentally, fear and stranger anxiety seems to develop in parallel to babies' increased independence from the caregiver. Indeed, around six to nine months, babies also begin to crawl, increasing their distance from their caregivers and their opportunities to encounter risky situations. By nine months, 
Babies not only express all six basic emotions, they can also discriminate between emotions. That is, they can identify when someone is angry, for example, or when they are happy based on their facial expressions. After basic or primary emotions, secondary emotions become evident. I know, us researchers are super creative with our labels. Secondary emotions develop after basic emotions and are often referred to as self-conscious emotions because these emotions include a focus on the self and consciousness of other people's potential response towards us. These self-conscious emotions include embarrassment, shame, guilt, and pride. Embarrassment is the first secondary or self-conscious emotion to be evident in development. Around 18 to 21 months, babies will begin to display key features of embarrassment, such as gaze aversion, blushing, and coy smiles, when they fail at a task in front of someone or look at themselves in the mirror. Around 18 months, we also begin to see signs of empathy or the child's response to another's distress. For example, if another child or adult begins to cry, the child is likely to show signs of the distress themselves or try to comfort the other person. By the preschool years, children feel and express all secondary emotions, including pride, guilt, and shame. Pride is pleasure felt from one's own achievement. Guilt is a painful feeling or regret caused when a person causes or anticipates causing something harmful. Guilt is often felt when one focuses on how one's, one's actions might affect someone else. Shame, on the other hand, is focused more on the self and on feeling a lack of self-worth. Research has shown that feeling guilt after a moral transgression is associated with positive outcomes, whereas feelings of shame are less conducive to post positive developmental outcomes. Later in the preschool years and early childhood, children's emotions continue to develop and become more complex. For instance, around three to five years, children begin to laugh at and understand jokes. They also begin to explain their own behavior in terms of emotions, such as saying things like, I hate her because I was angry, or failing at a test makes me feel sad. Children's understanding of others' emotions also experiences growth in the preschool years. Not only can they distinguish between emotions like infants and toddlers can, they can also understand the role that context plays in others' emotions. That is, they understand why someone might feel angry, sad, or surprised. Lastly, children begin to understand false emotions. False emotions entail expressing emotions that are not actually being felt. For instance, by the age of five, children will pretend that they'd like a gift, even if they don't. They also recognize that others can mask their own emotions. This might be because children also learn about display rules, or a norm of when, where, or how one should show emotion. While basic emotions are thought to be universal, how appropriate it is to show a particular emotion in public differs across cultures. During adolescence, there doesn't seem to be any new developmental milestones in terms of emotion, although the strength and quality of emotion does change. For example, adolescents tend to experience an increase in negative emotions. Some researchers argue that this might be the case because there is also an increase in stress, bullying, conflict in romantic relationships, and lack of sleep during adolescence. These have all been associated with negative emotions. We also know that, beyond feeling more negative emotions, adolescents are also more likely to perceive ambiguous emotional expressions as more negative. Again, this has been tied to the fact that adolescents tend to not get enough sleep and because of maturational changes in brain regions, including the prefrontal cortex, that are involved in regular, regulatory processes and more nuanced judgments. In relation to understanding emotion in others, adolescents also become better at using more subtle cues, such as eyes or tone of voice to distinguish emotion in others. 
To summarize, infants begin to experience basic emotions, including happiness, sadness, disgust, surprise, fear, and anger between two to nine months. They then experience secondary or self-conscious emotions, including embarrassment, guilt, and shame between 18 to three year, 18 months to three years. And children's understanding of emotion continues to increase in its sophistication throughout development.